knees, to be reminded of your will for us on earth, O Lord. And we ask that today your will in heaven will be done on earth as well. We ask that today your kingdom will shine in our hearts. We ask today that everything that is not of you will be taken away from us, O God, so that we may be pure in your sight, a chaste virgin ready for the return of our King. We ask for forgiveness, O Lord, for the things that we've been doing sa buhay namin. We understand that these are not pleasing in your sight. Cause us not to sin, O Lord. Make us have a covenant in, with our eyes so that we may never sin against you, O Lord. Help us, Almighty God, to sing praise and worship to you today. Help us, O God, to understand your word. Please use mightily ang lahat ng mga kapatiran who will be facilitating this worship service. And for all of us who will be listening, we pray that you would bless with a double portion of anointing your worshiper, your word deliverer, your exhorter, your preacher today, O God. And for all those who are still going to join, Panginoon, we ask for your blessing that they will be able to join on time, Panginoon. And thank you, Lord, for being our protection, our guard, our stronghold. My Lord, may you protect this service from the work of the devil, and may he have no place in this in this sanctuary. Please bless us all, O God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brethren, we have a testimony. Uh, if you received the message last night, Paul, we asked uh, everyone who is willing to give a testimony to send a short video. So we have one testimony, and uh, Brother CK, is it ready, Paul? Can we post it na po? Here we go. Let's listen in. We have a short technical difficulty po. One moment po. Okay na po. Hindi pa po eh. Hindi marinig? Hindi po. Uh, Nag-share ako ng screen but hindi kaya marinig. Uh, Wala pa po. Wala po. Okay, Edwin, welcome to the Wala pa rin? Meron po, wala. Uh, pakilakas po, kuya. Parang meron konti, konti lang. Pero pal palakasin niyo lang po. Malalakas no, ano. Ayan. Thank you. 
able to hear your testimony, pero I'm sure it was a good one. Uh, Kuya Alex, we thank you sa pag-share po sa testimony mo. We will try our best to replay that po mamaya. Ano? Uh, at the meantime, na, uh, since uh, we understand that we're in, still trying to learn yung mga things dito sa, sa Zoom, but we thank God pa rin po na may nag-testimony po. Uh, Kuya Alex, praise God po sa buhay mo. Uh, we will try to do that once again mamaya, okay? And I acknowledge, we acknowledge the presence of Kuya Tommy all the way from the Philippines. Welcome po, Kuya. Nice to see you po. God bless you po. Ingat po kayo dyan. We also see Kuya Ferdy. Kuya Ferdy, kamusta ang buhay sa lockdown? <laughs> uh, we also see Kuya George. Nasaan yung partner mo dyan, Kuya George? Ah, sige lang, darating din yung partner mo dyan. And of course, si Kuya Alex din. Thank you for joining us. Kuya Edwin, nice to see you po again. God bless you po, Kuya. Uh, I think Ate Raquel is also online. Welcome po, Kuya Raf. Good to see you again, Kuya. Senor, uh, Ate Lady, thank you for joining us po. We're glad to have you po ulit. Uh, si Ate Tin, of course, uh, alam naman natin na napaka, napakalayo ni Ate. Kaya, <laughs> diro lang Ate. We're really happy to have you. Uh, we have one African brother as well, I think. Who's gonna... Ah, Brother Henry, good to see you. How are you, my sir? Good to see you. Okay, I think that's about everyone right now. So for now, we will uh, be singing Worship to the Lord. But before we do that, <coughs> I'd like to read uh, very briefly. You don't need to flash it on the screen, uh, Sister Donna, not required to uh, flash on the screen. Uh, we'd I'd like to read just a little bit of Ecclesiastes Po today. Our... Uh, uh, the Bible reading is in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It's the last chapter. And uh, actually, our, our dear Pastor Fitch will be explaining and preaching a little bit more on that later on. 
Eh, is that Kuya Joe? Pastor Joe? Hi, Pastor! Ba, nagpapaba- nagpapabigaw tayo si Pastor Joe ba? Bagay, bagay. Ba, efekto pala kung kung, kung, kung for home quarantine. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to sit, good to have you, uh, Pastor. Thank you for joining us. Um, we would like to read po from Ecclesiastes 12. I'm looking at it from the New Living Translation. Just briefly, I will read. Do not, don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your Creator. Honor Him in your youth before you grow old and say, life is not pleasant. Remember Him before the light of the sun, moon, and stars is dim to your eyes and rain clouds continually darken your sky. If uh, Pastor Jess was here, talagang magre-react siya. He will say, whoa, whoa, whoa you said old? <laughs> Because uh, what he's trying to say here, if I were just to give a brief summary of everything he's saying, you will notice the word remember is spoken of most of the time. It's repeated a lot. And it's because he's trying to say, remember what your God did for you. Remember who your God is while you're still young. Because as you age, you start to lose your, your sight. You start to lose your hearing and all of those parts of your body, your faculty. You start to get sick. You start to get Um, diseases but what the preacher is explaining to us here is to remember his goodness and uh, because of that we're able to sing this first song and the song is entitled thank you lord my brothers and sisters before we sing this song can i ask can you remember are you thankful to your lord dear god what things has god done for you on this day to make you thankful Why don't we remember him for all the good things he's done for us? Why don't we remember how we used to be in darkness? We used to be in misery, in confusion, in sadness. Perhaps we were enjoying our sins. Perhaps we were enjoying uh, all of the nightlife and disco. Perhaps we were enjoying having, uh, watching all these kinds of movies and all these kinds of things. Perhaps we were enjoying drinking and just partying. But we find that it's not really the source of joy. Our Lord is the true source of joy. So that even in the current situation, Even if we're required to work from home, even if we're required to work from anywhere, or even if we're just given the time to stay at home, our joy isn't out there. But it's, it's, it's right here. It's where our king resides. Aren't you thankful for that? Why don't we be thankful and sing this song of praise to him? A very new song. I'm sorry it's in his new album. If you're not familiar with this song, thank you, Lord. Um... We, I encourage you to download this album. It's a very new song. Please forgive me if you don't know the lyrics yet. <laughs> so, let's, let's get that tune. If you want to sing out loud, don't mind your neighbors. <laughs> You want to raise those hands and raise them up because you know you're singing to the king who's listening. Let's sing it. I come before you. I come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and 
sisters, what are the things that you're thankful for today? Are you thankful that you're alive? Are you thankful that you are still protected by the Almighty? Don't you know that the Lord's angel is watching over you so you don't get sick, so that you don't get sickness, so that you're not hurt in any way? Aren't you glad that your king is working and that he never sleeps? He was watching over you while you slept this morning. And when you woke up, he gave you air to breathe. And as you stood up, he gave you the strength of your muscles. And as you started to pray, when you kneeled down, he gave you peace that surpasses all understanding. Why don't we give thanks to our Lord? Hallelujah. Verse 2. For all you've done in my life, you took my darkness and gave me a light. You took my darkness and gave me a light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can see. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin. You took my sin and my shame. Yes, you did. I am free. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing that again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done in my life. Let's sing it with our hearts. For all you've done in my life. Yes, you did us so much, oh God. You took my darkness and gave me your light. Who can see? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's remember his death on the cross. You took my sin and my shame. Yes, you did. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart.
But if he says, I'm not stay for a while, I need you to do something here on earth for a while. Help those who are in need. Comfort those who are need comforting. Help those who need your lo the love of Christ. And be ready, brethren. We are called for a greater purpose than just to be afraid. Fear not, for he's with you. Let's sing it one more time with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank for your son who's made us alive we were once dead but now we live we were once as dry as dead bones but you spoke and you made us live who are we O oh Lord that you would be mindful of us by your great mercy and love he sent your only son so that whomever will believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, there have been so many who've gone before us and we know where they are. We remember our pastor who went ahead. We remember our dear brother who went ahead. And today there was even one more pastor who went into glory and we remember him. When we know the God whom we serve, you cannot lie. We have so many blessings from our King and we are filled with joy for the greatest blessing is our King indeed, Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our disease. Let us bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. Hallelujah. In the final words of the book of Ecclesiastes, we read, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. I think that because of what's going on around us, because of the situation on earth today, we have a blessed look right now at our God. We can see him through the tears. We can see him with the eyes of faith. These are a blessing. Because we've been distracted for so many days, for so many years with the things that we have in our hands, gadgets. We've been distracted, but now we can see God. We can do what we were made to do, and that is to worship him. Brethren, I want you to picture in your mind light. In a dark room, there is light. That small light, because of its distance, we think it's maybe not so bright. But as we walk towards God, we move and we see in this dark room lots of things on the side and as we move past them we see that they make shadows because the light of God is the light there is just so much imagine if that light was God this song that we're about to sing is all about looking into the holiness of God 
So why don't we sing? And imagine entering into his very presence in the throne room of God, where his train fills the temple, the train of his robe, where the angels cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Imagine unapproachable light. And as we go towards that presence, we bow down low, worshiping the King of the universe, our Creator, the lover of our soul, Jesus the Christ. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, Let's sing that song, that verse once again. When I look into your holiness. When I look into your holiness. When I gaze into your loveliness. When all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. Let's worship the Lord. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. Once again. I worship you, I worship you, Ooh. the reason I live is to worship you. Let's sing it with a as if we're giving a love letter to our Lord. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. When I found the joy, when I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you.
I worship you, oh Lord Jesus, we worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. One more time. I worship you, oh Lord Jesus, we worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. The reason I live. Let's say it once again. The reason I live is to worship you. With all of our hearts, brothers and sisters, with joy in our King, whose light is so bright in the darkness, His light is so bright. I have a godly envy. I have a godly envy for those who were in the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus. It says in the word of God, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nathalon, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a marvelous light, a great light. Can you imagine the Lord Jesus walking on the shores of Galilee and you were there? One day we shall see our King face to face. Then we shall love Him. We shall bless His name. He shall be our shepherd and we shall live with him forevermore. He is worthy of all worship. He is worthy of all honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord. My Lord, King Jesus, our hearts are ready. Please send your sword into it. Send your word. Heal our disease. Give us a right heart now, a right mind, so that we may comprehend your word. Thank you for giving us this relationship. We value our relationship with you like nothing else. Thank you, my King, for hearing our prayers. Please bless every one of us now as we sit patiently and watch to learn from your servant. Bless your pastor with your anointing, O God. And may you keep us. Amen. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever. Hello? So, anyway, I'll just speak and speak and speak. I don't know if uh, I can see you guys. Things so small, and it feels so weird to talk with no one in front of me <laughs> or with very few people in front of me. Thank you, Tanya Bako. Okay, okay, so blessed day for each and everyone. Uh, it, it would be my first time to talk in front of uh, 
barely no one. <laughs> and uh, it's weird, it's weird. So, and they don't even know how to start. Anyway. <coughs> We will be talking about uh, our Bible reading for uh, today, and I uh, chose the uh, last chapter of uh, Ecclesiastes, which is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter twelve. Uh, before we we start, we will. Uh, Come into uh, prayer. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful day. It is a blessed day indeed, O God, that you have given to each and every one of us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us connected all this time, O Lord. We know, O God, that you are uh, God that is good. You're all well, O God. Hallelujah. And uh, we pray, O God, that uh, you will just... Keep our minds, Lord God, active as we have this uh, kind of, uh, of teaching and preaching, Lord. Uh, I know that this is uh, kind of boring, oh God, because, because we just look into, into screens and not have the physical, physical interaction with each and every one. But then keep our, our, our minds active, Lord. Keep our hearts receptive to your word and... Uh, Keep our ears, for God, open to your uh, commands and uh, keep our lives, Lord God, help us to keep our lives, Lord God, to obey in whatever things, Lord God, that we hear. And uh, as uh, we know, Lord God, that this is to be beneficial for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord God, for, for everything. We know, Lord God, that you are our greatest teacher. Without you, Holy Spirit, we are nothing. We need you, we need uh, your guidance, and we need your wisdom into this day. All of this, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, your Son, in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, some statistics here. Uh, how, how many of you uh, understand the book of Ecclesiastes? <laughs> How many of us understands the book of Ecclesiastes? Uh, honestly, when reading the book of Ecclesiastes, this is a quite a uh, uh, difficult book to, to read, actually. And to, not to read, but to understand. Uh, but I will be giving you some statistics here. The book of Ecclesiastes is, is the 21st book in the Bible. Uh, it is the 21st book in the Old Testament. It has 12 chapters, and we'll be discussing the last chapter. It has 34 commands. No? All commands coming from the author, which is uh, Solomon. There is one promise, which, which can be found in, uh, verse 11, uh, in chapter 11, verse 1. There is no prophecy in this book, and there is no message coming from God in this book. So I will... I will, I will uh, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, statistics that there is no message coming from God in this book. Instead, this is all coming from the author, which is uh, uh, Solomon, you know? King Solomon. These are his reasonings. Now, this book was written because of his reasonings, all of his reasonings. Okay, this is all in his mind. No? The book of Ecclesiastes is uh, as uh, David, uh, what's his name? Guzik, no? As David Guzik uh, states that the book of Ecclesiastes is one of the most unusual and perhaps the most difficult to understand books of the Bible. Uh, why? Because it has the spirit, uh, it has a spirit of hopeless despair, he said, no? It has no praise, it has no peace, no? and it seems to promote questionable conduct. No? 
as uh, the, the the more you 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 read it, the more you question. The more the more the more you read it, the more it becomes difficult. You know? the more it becomes difficult, and the more questions comes in. So, but if you if you notice, if you have read the book of Ecclesiastes, I hope that you have read the book of Ecclesiastes. From the very beginning, from chapter one to, to to this day, chapter chapter twelve, you can you can all, always uh, there is one theme, no, that uh, that the that the book of Ecclesiastes or keyword that the book of Ecclesiastes is always stating, and that word is vanity, no, vanity from from verse uh, from chapter one. Uh, you can you can already see the word vanity. In fact, in verse one alone, no, there are uh, he he had like a lot of vanities here. Let me see how many vanities. No, in verse one alone, there's uh, in verse one in chapter one alone. Sorry, in chapter one alone. Uh, There's like vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. See? Uh, like, there's a like of lots and lots of vanities. Vanities in, in, in some other in translation is meaningless. No? In some other translation, meaningless. It is sabihin pointless. Uh, uh, in Tagalog, Walang kwenta or something? Is it is it the right the right word? No. Uh, in Tagalog, by Bible, I, I don't know. No? So, but uh, it is the uh, the key word for the book of Ecclesiastes. So the book records Solomon's reasoning under the sun. So if you if you can you can you can read also. Uh, there are so many. Uh, Words no, that are, are praise that you can you can read where where Solomon speaks under the sun. If you say here that it means that in this life, no, in this life, under the sun, whatever it is in this life, no, it means it is under the sun. And all this also, and since this is this book, based on what I I uh uh David Guzik states no, that this this uh, book has is hopeless. Uh, it has a spirit of hopeless despair. It has no praise. It has no peace. It seems questionable in the life of King Solomon here. Have you questioned that? No. There is something different in the in in the author here when he when he when he talks about vanities. When he talks about when he talks about uh, uh, when questioning life, the meaningless of life, on how life on how life is is uh, meaningless, and uh, there's there, there you have to think and question what it is like to have a life such as uh, such a life of of the of the man who has great wisdom of. God giving him such great wisdom, you know? a great wisdom maybe second to Jesus. And it seems like the this this person is somewhat is somewhat uh, uh, out of his mind, <laughs> out of his mind. Someone something out, no? Very weird. But. I think this is, is that the 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 a person who has great wisdom sometimes it becomes it becomes weird. <laughs> I don't think so, no. But did you know that the the, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes records Solomon's uh, reasoning under the sun while he is in backslidden condition, no? He is drifting away. In the presence of God, when He wrote this book, no. So the book of Ecclesiastes means the preacher. Uh, that's why it, when you go into your Tagalog version, it's, uh, it says there ang mga aral. 
no? Ang mga ngaral, the preacher or the word if Christos means the preacher, it is a Latin word. It means that the one who convenes or the one who addresses an assembly, no? In short, he is the teacher or he is the preacher. And uh, in Hebrew, it is called it is called kohelet, no? Kohelet in Hebrew. If you have a Hebrew Bible or if you have a Jewish Bible, it it, it is not called Ecclesiastes because Ecclesiastes is actually Latin, no? But it is called kohelet in Hebrew. So I hope that you are you are uh, you are tawo uh, dito contract din sa akin ha. Anyway, uh, vanity, vanity. So vanity, what does it mean by vanity? No, vanity is the is the is the futile or the pointless emptiness of trying to be happy, no, apart from God. That is what the word vanity means in terms of what he wrote in this book. No? Futile or pointless emptiness of trying to be happy apart from God. So, if you, if you, if you, uh, if you read this this uh, this book uh, spe specifically in in chapter twelve, which is actually the last part, no? but uh, normally if you if you go back no, into, our, into our into our previous daily readings, we can see there that you must eat, drink, rejoice, do good, live life joyfully, and then uh, in other parts, fear God, keep His commandments, etc., etc. No, this is Life under the sun. Amen? This is life under the sun. And uh, it is actually part of our very culture and up until this day. No? I hope that you uh, will agree with me. No? Sometimes we are, we, in, this, in, this, in this very day, we are devoting our, our, ourselves into, into knowing, knowing God. Devoting ourselves into reading God. But then, sometimes... But but then most of the time of our, of our days we we go into into having fun, we go into our spending spree, we go into our our drinking and eating and uh, you know gambling. If you are you are still gambling, no, whatever we do, this is life under the sun, no? And oh and and uh, the conclusion of all of all it, uh, of it all. As what the preacher says, it's all vanity, meaningless. Amen. So, my my, my uh, title for this day will be finding meaning in the meaningless life. Uh, finding meaning in the meaningless life. Let's open. Uh, let us have our, our Bibles with us. If you uh, or if you can read this uh, uh, verse in front of your of your screens or whatever, no? It says there uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter twelve verse one. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near. When you say, "I have no pleasure." in them. Now, how come the, the author or the preacher uh, state this first verse in chapter 12? It says here, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. What is he referring to here? No, We cannot understand this verse 1 if we, could not, if we will not go to the previous, previous uh, chapter. So, this is a reference to uh, chapter 11, verses 9 to 10. No? If you can uh, go, uh, 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 refer to uh, chapter 11, verses 9 to 10. Yeah. 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 to 10, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer, in, cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that all of, for all of this, God will bring you judge, into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Huh? So this is the the uh, uh, like the uh, prologue and like the epilogue huh? of the of the of the twelfth chapter and verse one of, uh, verse one of Ecclesiastes uh, twelve. No. The youth here refers to 11, uh, to chapter 11, verses 9 to 10. It says here, And let your heart uh, rejoice, O young man, in your youth. Uh, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. Uh, so you see, it says here that you must go merry. Uh, whatever your heart says, go, go with it. No? That uh, famous uh, uh, saying, no, that you must uh, again, you follow your heart, no. As a young person or as a young, uh, as we are all still active, no, and very much kicking, no. Some uh, we usually hear that that you must follow your heart. Whatever makes you happy, go, no. Whatever makes you your, uh, you feel the pleasure, then go follow your heart, uh, and that is uh, what uh, chapter eleven verse nine says here. Uh, follow your heart. Uh, let your heart cheer in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart, uh, and in the sight of your eyes. In short, do everything you want to do. Uh, do everything that you want to do. Then, he said, but know that for all this, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Again, the word vanity. Childhood, youth are vanity. Vanity. They are meaningless. In short, everything that, uh, that a, 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 a normal youth or a normal young person does is all vanity, which is actually true because normally when, you, when we are still in our younger years, we don't know God and we just do whatever we want to do. We drink, we, we, we party, we party all the time. Uh -huh. We have our boyfriends and girlfriends. We do sex, no? Premarital sex and uh, whatever it is, you know, we do drugs. We drink lots and lots. No? If you agree with that, then say amen. <laughs> yeah, that's me, no? And uh, for sure, the, uh, uh, we, have, we have done all of these things when we are still in our younger days. So, the preacher says in chapter one, uh, in chapter twelve, verse one here. Remember now, there are creator in the days of your youth. So while we're still young, no, remember your creator. But then, take note of the word now. There is an, a sense of urgency here. No, it says. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. All of us are still young, right? For sure, all of us are still young. Uh, God has given us 120 years to live in this earth. And uh, if you are, you are in your 40s, like me, I am still in, in my one-third of my, of my life. No? Two-thirds is still in the future. Yeah. If you are still under 40, 
then you are still like halfway of your one third of your life. Yeah. You have still more years to 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 do things uh, in this earth. Okay. So remember now your creator. The preacher is 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 saying to remember God in you and while you are still young. And he says here, before the difficult days come, such as like this, no, the COVID COVID the pandemic, this is one of the difficult days in our in our in our generation right now. We have this kind of difficulties where we don't know who the enemy is. We don't know who, who uh, where how to get all this uh, how how the bible uh, comes in or goes out we don't even know no? this is one of the difficult days that we have right now and the years draw near when you say i have no pleasure in them no it says here remember the uh, remember uh, god while you are still young before the difficult days comes, and before the years draw near, when you say "kalas," <laughs> no, kalas, no, that's it. No, I have nothing more to to do with this life. No? so in short, if we if we if we. Uh, Think of this uh, verse. No? Remember your creator no? before it's too late. It's as simple as that. No? Before it's too late, remember him. And how do we uh, and, and when when we remember him? Remember him now. Okay. So that is the uh, how we uh, interpret this verse. Verses 2 to 6. Well, verses 2 to 6. This is a poetic description of the advancing age of man. Well, Solomon is so wise. No? He is so knowledgeable that he, he uses allegory in, in, how, in how to in explaining things. No? He uses allegory in explaining things. He is so deep. We, can, we cannot almost uh, fathom the, the, the wisdom that God gives him. No? This is a poetic description of an advancing age. Verse 2, While the sun and light and moon and stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. It just means, no? When there's still time. No? When there is still time. When the sun and the light are still there, no? And the moon and the stars are not yet dark. No? And the clouds do not return after the rain. In short, when there is still time left in your life. So remember him when there is still time left in your life. Verse 3. In the day when the keeper of the house trembled and the strong men bowed down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the window grow dim. This is very, very uh, deep. But then if we, if we, uh, we, we will uh, uh, learn this one by one. So in the day when the keepers of the house tremble means the arms and the hands that keep the body now began to tremble. It's true. When, become, when we become old, then our hands and our arms no, began now to tremble. No wonder that we, we, can, we, we can see old people having you know, their hands uh, uh, shaking already. You know? I can, uh, I think in my one third of my life, because I am already one third of my life, <laughs> I can, uh, I have, I have some, some other, uh, some types of this kind of uh, ailment. I did not shake, but I can feel some pain in my in my arms. I can feel some pain in my wrist because maybe of too much work. Well, the the the, the years of of uh, clicking 
of clicking and and pounding the keyboard no? from from the days of, of college and up until this day no you keep on, on just typing and typing and typing knowing that i am uh, uh, part of my of my life uh, is is i am a programmer so i just keep typing and typing and typing and typing so i can feel the pain in my wrists in my in my fingers and everything you know? I can even feel some pain in my muscles here. Huh? Yeah. But that doesn't mean I am old. <laughs> I'm still one third no, of my life. No, I'm still in my 40s. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hope that you, you are getting my joke as well. Uh, I, 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 I don't see you. But anyway, uh, the next... The next <laughs> Uh, line here of the verse, the strong men bow down. No, strong men bow down. It means that uh, the legs and the knees began to weaken. No, when you grow old, no, you, the, you used to be a marathoner before, but when you go oh, grow old, then your one your thirty kilometers per hour uh, run becomes five kilometers per hour already. No? when you grow old. Why? Becomes because our legs and our knees begin to feel pain. No? Some, of, uh, some of the people, not us, no? some of the people who are aging uh, uh, acquire uh, some uh, arthritis. No? They have arthritis and uh, they have some pain in their joints in their, in their, uh, and they have difficulty in walking. Next, when the grinders cease because they are few, this actually means it, no? The teeth are losing and chewing is actually more difficult, no? In their time, no? in their in their time, uh, what's this? Pustiso? Uh, what is false teeth? false teeth or postizo in in Tagalog? No, false teeth is not yet is not yet being created. Dentures, no, dentures are not are not yet created. So when when you have like you are you are toothless on on in your below your uh, and there you can only just only see gum and you have one tooth here. How can you eat? No? It's it's very it's quite difficult. Imagine that. No? It's quite difficult. But praise God to the technology right now that uh, we can have that even if we have good teeth, still the the doctors can make your good teeth still good and look perfect and look like it's porcelain. But anyway, it says here that teeth are being lost and chewing is more difficult. We cannot deny that if if we uh, that if we age, no. Our, our teeth also loses its uh, ability, even in uh, the ability to chew, and even the ability to eat, and even the ability to grind food. That's why if you notice that our, our, our parents or our lolos and lolas, no, our grandparents, they tend, to, they tend not to eat hard, hard stuff, no, hard food, because of their teeth. Okay. And the next line here, and those that look to the windows grow dim. It means that the eyes are be, are dim already. No, we cannot see uh, clearly. Or sometimes the worst is if you have become blind. No, if we age, our our eyes tend to lose uh, focus because of because of some some uh, difficulties in uh, in the eyes or some uh, problems in the eyes uh, but, but uh, the the most difficult part there is we lose our sight yeah. verse 4 when the doors are shut in the street and the sound of grinding is low when the one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all and all the daughters of music are brought low. No? This is another 
uh, another uh, uh, description or allegory of uh, Solomon uh, as in addition to verse 3. So it means that when the doors are shut in the street, it means that the mouth is already unable to speak. No? We are not unable to speak anymore. No? And then, we used to, sometimes we used to be so talkative in our younger, in our younger years, but when we, we, when we, when we age, no? we, we don't even have, uh, we cannot even speak any, anymore. No? And then, uh, the, next, uh, the next is, and the sound of grinding is low. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, and the sound of grinding is low. This means that the ears become weaker and weaker. You cannot hear anymore. That's why uh, we, we as young young people, young people, we used to shout at our grandparents. No? we shout at our grandparents, and then someone hears us and says, "Why are you shouting your 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 lolo or your lola?" No? It's because they could not hear. No? And we and we tend to be annoyed with our with our grandparents because when we shout, they seem like they have the they, they they capture the the words in a different way, <laughs> and we tend to get annoyed. Am I right? No. So I think you are you are. Kanang. Uh, oh. Anyway. Uh, Next one, when one rises up at the sound of a bird, no? and when we age, no? we tend to sleep uh, little. No? It is, uh, sleeping becomes more difficult. No? And we easily, and uh, an old man easily awakes. In uh, some other uh, place, no? it says that uh, tulog banok, no? Uh, a sleep uh, when a chicken sleeps. No, when a chicken sleeps, you, know, you just tend to like this. Then we awake again, and then <laughs> awake, and then awake. No? Did you notice know chicken? No, they they are like that. No, tulog banok in in Tagalog or sleeping like chicken. No, sleep becomes more difficult in uh, in uh, older people. When I went to the Philippines last year uh, last december you know, waiting for for my for my job confirmation when i went to the philippines uh, me my dad and my mom sleep in the same room and my dad is quite uh, old he uh, he is like a few more years on his on his uh, two thirds of his life uh, and uh, he's uh, around 78 and then, uh, one thing that I noticed about, about his sleeping patterns is that he sleeps, and then after like an hour or two, he wakes up. <gasps> he wakes up. And then he, he pees or he urinates, and then he looks at the time, and then he says, oh, it's already 11 o'clock. And then he wakes up. No? He goes out, maybe he watches TV, you know, or goes to his computer. Uh, and then he just play and then uh, and play and watch YouTube, ma watch Mani Pacquiao in YouTube because he loves boxing. It's the only it's the only thing that he he watches in YouTube. <laughs> boxing <laughs> because he doesn't know how to do it, how to search. <laughs> That's why. No? And then after like fifteen minutes, he comes back. No? And then he looks at the time again, and then he sleeps back. And then after a while, maybe after after an hour again, no, he wakes up and then he says he he, he pees again and then he looks at the, the time. Oh, it's already like this. And then he goes out again, no, just just like that. Now, that is part of his like uh, sleep sleep routine. And uh, so, and when when I was I was there, I was getting annoyed actually because I am thinking how how come he he sleeps like that? I could not understand why he sleeps just like that. And then in, in, in the morning, he, he, he feels so tired. He feels so sleepy. You know? And then when he, when he, he, he sits, he just sits here and then... And sometimes you can hear, hear him. 
<laughs> we're just like that, you know. But I think that is how uh, old people uh, does, no? My Lola is is just like that as well. So uh, for sure, you can relate. You can very much relate. Mm. So sleep becomes more difficult and is easily awakened. Next uh, line, and all the daughters of music are brought low. No? Singing, music are less appreciated. Amen. When you grow old, singing and music becomes less appreciated. And they become, they become very irritated when hearing all these types of music. I can, I can still remember no? well, in my Lola before, of course, in my, in my time, the... the, the What's this? The the also also uh, the music or uh, the genre the genre of music at, at that time is of course uh, heavy metal you know all those those you know head bumping <laughs> you know and then when my when my Lola uh, sees me and he see and then and, uh, and then she sees me like banging my head he, she will just say. It's being crazy. In this ayat, ma, na buang na. He always, she always tells me that I am, I am like this. And, uh, you know, if you if you come to think of it, in their time, in their in their time, we used to have this twist and shout. You know, they twist and twist and twist like like crazy as well. No, huh? so just like in our time, we 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 used to to headbang. In their times, they used to twist and shout, no? Twist and twist and twist. And for sure, their, their lolos and their, their grandparents at the time also says that they are also out of their mind. So just life is just like that. Verse 5. Also, they are afraid of height and the terror and, the, and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden. And desire fails, for man goes for his eternal home, and the mourners go about the street. Verse 5, again, uh, in, in continuation of, of his uh, description of old age. Afraid of height, they are afraid of height, of course. Balance and depth perception, perception is no longer reliable. No? So old people tend to, tend to be afraid of heights because of their balance because the the uh, kinesthetic uh, sense of kinesthetic no, is already not uh, accurate uh, terrors is on the way once become uh, old people also becomes fearful in life no? they are very much fearful in life unlike the youth no the youth just just goes on and on no because they are still active, they are, they are, they have, they have everything. You know, they are, they think they have everything, and they are risk, risk, uh, risk takers. You no, know? but the, the 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 but the old people tend to be more uh, fearful in what they do. Hmm. When the almond tree blossoms, this this actually is. When the hair becomes white, no? when the hair becomes white, look, I love the allegory of Solomon being used here. The almond tree blossoms because the almond tree produces white flowers. No? That's why it says here when the almond tree blossoms no? or the hair becomes white. For sure, you, you saw your uh, people with, with, all, with all white hair. No? I love people with, with all white hair. It looks good. You know? So maybe at my time, I will have this, this all white hair as well. It would look good on me, for sure. <laughs> anyway, and as uh, the grasshopper is a burden, you know? it, mean, it, just, it just means that the once active becomes weak. Or it means that the last weight of a burden, uh, the least weight, a burden to carry, to carry. No, it means that everything that they do becomes tedious. No, everything it become everything that they do becomes tiresome. No. 
Next line, and the desire fails. It means the passion and the desire of life weakens and subsides. No? There's no more desire to do pleasure. No? There's no more desire to do things that makes people happy. And then, for man goes to his eternal home, this simply means the eternal, the eternal place. When you, when you, when you, when your uh, air is already cut, toop, when the heart stops to pump and the brain stops to stops to stops, stops to work, then kalas, no? Then this is where your home go, becomes, no? Man goes to his eternal home. What eternal place is that? There are only two eternal places that, that this. Uh, due for us, no heaven or hell. Only two two place, heaven or hell. And then and the mourners go about the street. Of course, when you die, they mourn. The people mourn. So what does this mean? So a life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, hopeless old age. Do you agree? It means that if if a life uh, when you become when you become old and you have you have you have no God in us, you know, everything is hopeless. You know, everything is hopeless. But in contrast, a life with God, you no, know, a life with God, even if we are old, you know, that is a life that is fulfilling. I hope that you agree, right? Even if now, for our, for our very age, you know, when we are still like one-third in our life, we can always compare our life from before, from the life that we have right now, having God or having Jesus in our lives. Life is actually more meaningful. Amen? Life is more fulfilling. When the days of trouble, you know, with disabilities, sickness, or handicaps, or whatever it is comes in old age you no know, the life that the, the life that has that has god still although they they bear that they they bear that the kind of that is like uh, the barriers of life yet they still enjoy life why because life is still satisfying you no know, because of the hope of eternal life which is in verse 5 people who has god in them knows where to go when the lights go out. Amen? Do you agree? When, when, when the lights go out with, with, people, with people who ask God, they know where they will end. No? They know the eternal place. And, uh, and praise be to God. No? This is something for us to note. Brethren, this is for, something for us to note that we must remember God right now no right now because we don't actually know when our life comes to an end no? and uh, as long as we have god in us and as long as we have fulfilling life because god is in us and jesus is in us we have jesus in us then we have we know our eternal hope our eternal home we know where we will go when we uh, go out of this world it is also, uh, in addition, no, it's also uh, for us to know, know that being young is always exciting. That is true. No? Being young is always exciting. But the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God if it makes young people focus on passing pleasures instead of eternal values. No? If we go on, if we, if we go to our, our separate Bible reading in Psalms chapter 36, which is actually our Bible reading for today, no? can we go to uh, no? uh, chapter 36 of Psalms? No? Psalms uh, 36, I think, 1 to... One to four, no? 
an oracle within my heart concerning the transgressions of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates the word of his mouth are wickedness and deceit, and he has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed, and he sets, he sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not, uh, he does not abhor evil. You know, when, when we are still in our, when we, when we, when we uh, go into, 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 uh, uh, being, being, uh, what do you call this? Uh, absorbed, being absorbed into the life of of a of a youth having no God, then people become wicked, and this is how wicked people does. No, this is very perfect with our with our with our with our Bible reading in Ecclesiastes as well. No. The wicked people, the wicked people doesn't fear God. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't fear God before his eyes. No? Why? Because he flatters himself no? in his own eyes. He flatters himself. He makes himself high and makes God low. Or even he doesn't even recognize God. Hmm. And whatever comes out, uh, whatever words that comes out of his mouth are all just wickedness and deceit. No? And he has ceased to be wise and to do good. No? He stops being wise, and he does all he does is just foolish things. And he devises wickedness on his bed. No? And he sets himself in a way that is not good. And he does not abhor evil. He does he just do things. No? based on the pleasantry of his heart, a cheerful, uh, the cheerfulness of his own heart, which is just wickedness. Amen? <clears throat> so, make your strength available to God when it is still yours. No? That is... Uh, our advice, no? that is our advice. That, that is, this is even the advice of the picture here. No? Make your strength available to God when it, when, when it is still yours, when it, it, you still have time. During your youthful years for the youth or during for, for the younger years when we are still young. Amen? I don't think that the, there are some, some of us here are, still, are already in the, in the two-thirds of their life. I don't think so. We are still in the one third of our life, the forties, no, or even the fifties, no, maybe fifties or sixties. Uh, but I don't think that there there are people here that is listening to me that is on their two thirds of their lives right now. No? So make that make that uh, uh, make that choice, church, no, brethren. Don't waste it on evil or meaningless activities that become bad habits. And make you, you know, that makes you callous, that makes your heart hard. Amen? Don't make these bad habits. Instead, devote yourself to God. Amen? And make life more meaningful. In short, you must seek God now. Amen? Verse 6 to 12, uh, verse 6 to 8. No? This is a poetic description of Solomon with regards to death. No? With regards to death. Again, this is an allegory by Solomon with regards to death. It says here, remember your creator before the silver cord is loose. It means that before your spine gets loose, no? Before your spine gets loose, when you when you when you when you when you are old, your spine gets becomes becomes frail. So you become like like this one. No? Bako in Isaiah. Uh, I don't know what what's that in uh, hunchback. No, something like that. When the spinal cord is loose, 
or the golden bowl is broken. It means that the head or the skull no, is broken. Or the pitcher or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, it means the heart no, is broken. Or the wheel or the wheel broken at the well, it means that the heart stops to pump. No? It pertains to the heart that stops pumping blood to the body to keep you alive. No? In short, no? No? Kalas, you're already dead. No? Verse 7, then the dust will return to the earth. No? It is us returning to the grave, in short. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. So again, this is the final destination of either heaven or hell. And then he says, vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All is vanity. Uh, in, in A, vanity of vanities, says the preacher, and all is vanity. The silver cord, golden bowl, pitcher, and wheel symbolizes life's fragility. No? It means life is fragile. Life is, 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 is easily broken. No? Life is easily cut. And it just shows how easily death comes to us and how swiftly and unexpectedly we can return to the dust from which we came. No? We can just return to the dust from which we came. It is very sad uh, that, that we heard the news just this morning that uh, one of the, of the pastors of the other church which we came from you know, has already, uh, has already uh, gone. You know? It's already gone you know? just, this, just this morning. You know? And uh, that is, that is the, a, perfect, a perfect example of this, of this uh, verses, no? how life is suddenly cut. He doesn't. Uh, we, 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 uh, his his life has been has been active all day. Maybe yesterday, no, and then all of a sudden his life has been cut short. No? That is how life how life is, no? and. Whatever, whatever that he, he is doing, no, before before his life ends, all right, all, it is just it is just the Lord who knows. No? We don't know. We don't know. But that is how life ends. It comes unexpectedly. We cannot say that oh I will be dead in twelve fifty nine in the afternoon today. No, you cannot say that because life comes unexpectedly. In a few minutes, you will, you, you, we may, we may, uh, God may cut, cut our, 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 our life. You know? In a few months, God will cut our lives. You know? but therefore, we should recognize that life is precious, is precious, and life is a precious resource. For us to be, be used wisely, for us to be used seriously, no? To use it seriously and not just waste it. Amen? Do you agree? No? We must use it wisely and we must use it seriously. No? Because this life, we are just managers of the life that God gave us. And if the time comes when God will strip away no, uh, our spirit, of course, our bodies will return to dust. If God will strip us on God, or, or God's purpose, of course, our work will be in vain. If God will strip us of his love, our service will be just pointless. Therefore, we must put God first over all. In everything that we do and in all that we do because without him we have nothing without him we are just like class nothing knowing that life is meaningless I hope that you know that life is meaningless without God motivates 
us or the, a wise person to seek God first. I pray that uh, after this, we will be a wise person. You know? A wise person knowing that life is indeed precious, knowing that indeed life is indeed uh, pointless without God in us. Amen? Chapter, uh, verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. You still remember my introduction about Solomon? Why he, read, why he, why he wrote this book? And uh, up, uh, uh, on the purpose of he wrote, uh, on, his, on his status while writing this book, he is, uh, as I told you earlier, that he is drifting away from the presence of God. No? He is in the backsliding stage at this, at this time. No? So, but then look at look at how oh, look at the, the wisdom that 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 uh, that is be that the preacher imparts to the assembly, the wisdom that is that imparts the, to the to to the congregation or no, or the teacher or the preacher. He says here, moreover, because the preacher was wise, it means that wisdom is still. Uh, is still uh, working no? in his life because it is God who gave it to him. No? It, is, it is God who, 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 who is not a hatagbawi, you know? Uh, oh, who is not a give and take God. Once he gives, he gives. No? He doesn't, and he doesn't take that wisdom. He gives it to, to Solomon, it is his. Then he says, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. In ten, the preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright. What was it? Words of truth. So there are four folds here, work of the preacher to proclaim God's truth. Number one, he taught the people knowledge. No? He taught the people knowledge. Still, he, has, he, has, he is wise, then he taught the people knowledge to recognize, no? for the people to recognize that there is still truth. No? And then, number uh, second, what, 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 in verse 9, he says that he pondered it. No? He pondered wisdom. Still he has wisdom, he pondered and pondered and pondered. Ano yung pondered sa ibang, ano He pondered. Uh, oh, he, he thinks about it, he thinks wisdom. And uh, third, he sought out wisdom and set many proverbs in order. No? And uh, the result of it is the book of Proverbs. No? The book of Proverbs. He sought wisdom and many proverbs in order. And then number four, and he sought to find acceptable words. No? The acceptable words here is the words of truth. Ele verse 11, the words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of the scholar of scholars are well are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. You know, a goad is, a goad is, is a stick, you know? It is a stick uh, with a metal, with a, with a sharp metal in the, in the edge of the stick. It, it is actually being, uh, 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 they, uh, they poke it on the, on the ox or the cattle, you know? So that the cattle will, will, will walk uh, will focus on, on in one direction only. No? So the words of the wise are like goals. No? What is the words of the wise here? It means that the word of truth. No? That the word of God are like goals. No? When, when it pokes, no? it makes our life or our direction of our lives go straight. 
sometimes but if, if you come to think of it if you if you look at the goods if you look at look at the gold it is sharp and it hurts it gives pain to the ox and the word of god is just like that no says that uh, the word of god is like is a like a is a double edged sword no it it uh, it penetrates to the bones and marrows no but then it disciplines us it disciplines us. It makes it takes us to a direction where God wants us to go to. No? So that is the word of God, the word of truth. It is like a gold. Sometimes the word of God gives us an uh, an unpleasant, an unpleasant uh, gives us an unpleasant uh, feeling. No? Because, of course, who wants to be in pain? No? But that is discipline. God loves us so much that he gives discipline to his children. If, if he doesn't love us, then he just, maybe he just left us. No? And uh, whatever our heart does, he doesn't care. But God loves us so much. God loves you so much no? that he cares all about you. He cares about you. He even died for you. No? He even came to this world no? to be... The, the sacrificial lamb for your sins, for our sins. No? He loves us so much that, that he, he laid his life just for you and me. Amen? So, if we hear uh, disciplinary words coming from God, from the word of God, just take it and appreciate that God loves you so much. Appreciate the words of truth. Appreciate it. If it, if, if it hurts, then just, just accept it. It, it may be unpleasant at first, but when it is applied in your life, then it will keep you moving into God's direction. Amen? Mm. And of course, uh, uh, it says here also no, that uh, the words of the wise are like those, the words of scholars are well uh, like driven nails given by one shepherd. So, this one shepherd here is, means God. No? The, the words of the wise actually here is still inspired by the word of truth. No? Second Corinthians, uh, second, second Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17, no? That the word of God is a the word of God is a inspiration no? coming from God. Uh, all scripture is given by, by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse, uh, next verse, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen? So it is an inspiration, the word of God. It's an inspiration. Oh, the word of truth, I mean. Verse 12. And further, my son, be admonished by this. No? This means the word of truth. No? It's the word of God. Of making many books there, of many, many books, there is no end. And much study is wearisome to the flesh. No? So these are endless opinions about life, the philosophies of life. How to do it? How we should how we should do it? No, if you if you go to a bookstore, you can see there are do it yourself, no, the do it yourself or the philosophies of life, the philosophy of this one, the philosophy of this guy. If you read biographies of one biographies, the philosophy of this guy, the principles of this guy, etc., etc., no. Which we think that if we if we come to apply what they live on how they live it no we could just read and study forever and ever with our lives still still diminishing no it is not wrong to study or to, uh, it's not wrong to study uh, these opinions or these principles no? of these people but we should spend the majority of our time reading the word of god amen Do you agree Wish, wisdom should lead to action. Why students of the Bible will understand 
and do what they are taught. Because our time on earth is so short, that is the reality. We should use it to learn important truths. Because it affects our life, it affects your life, and, and also your eternity. Amen? It affects your life. And whatever, whatever you do in your life, no? it affects also your, your, your home base in eternity when you, when, you, when you go home. And the last two verses, no? Third, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. So this is the conclusion of the matter. Solomon, Solomon wrote 12 chapters of this book, book only to find only to have a conclusion of this book you know? and he, he put it in two verses only verses 13 and 14 what is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is man's all in short for this is everything you know? 14 for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So there are three important truths of this scripture. No? The whole duty of man is to fear God, number one. Amen? Number two, that man should keep his commandments. And number three, to prepare for eternity due to the fact that every work of man will be brought into judgment. Even, even every secret thing, whether, you, whether that is good or bad, no, it will be uh, brought up into open when you meet God, when you meet Jesus face to face. No, it will be brought into open. That is the truth in these verses. Matthew 16, 27 says that for the Son of Man will come with his angels in his glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. You know? He will judge us according to what we do. In his conclusion, you know, not my conclusion, but uh, Solomon's conclusion, you know, Solomon presents the, the prescription, no? the prescription for the two main ailments presented in this book. Those who lack purpose and direction in life should fear God and keep his commandments. And those who think that life is unfair should remember that God will review every person's life to determine how he or she has responded to him. And he will bring every deed into judgment. My question is, have you committed your life to God? Both present and also for the future. And how does your life measure up with the standard of God? No? How does your life measure to the standards of God? If you are to uh, put into a level of God's standard. It's only you and God huh, who knows that. The book of Ecclesiastes cannot be interpreted correctly without reading these final two verses. Huh? No matter what the mysteries and apparent contradictions of life are, we must work toward a single purpose of knowing God. Amen? So in short, no, we must, from the very beginning in chapter 1, of all these vanities and all this stuff, all the contradictions of, of the reasonings of, of, of Solomon, no, of things under the sun, like grasping in the air, it means that it is pointless, nothing, nothing can be grasped on of this life. No, it will be it will it will it leads us into this final truth no? knowing that uh, uh, which is you know, 
fear, to fear God and to keep His commandments. Hallelujah. As a conclusion, no, the book of Ecclesiastes teach us, teaches us uh, two things based on, on, on our, on our, on our uh, learnings for, for this day. Number one, we must grow into godliness. No? The book of Ecclesiastes teaches us to go into godliness. The book encourages us to live a godly life. Although we must live a life, no? he encourages us to live a life that is, that is our heritage. We usually, we usually read that in the previous verses, in the previous chapters. That we must live life because because we must live life according to our heritage because it is our heritage. It means that that God gives the blessings to us. We must enjoy it. Whatever we have right now is a blessing coming from God. No? But 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 there's a but. We must not indulge in it. No. Instead, we must live a godly life. Aside from 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 from. Uh, from enjoying this, this, the blessings that God gave us, we must also live a life you know, that is godly, commending that everything that we have is coming from Him. Amen? Because uh, in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, it says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Indeed, we have 120, year, 120 years to, to live in this earth, but we have a more, a more, uh, a more, uh, we have eternity, no? After this 120 years, no? If we just, if we just work hard for our lives, gaining riches, gaining whatever it is, no? Until we just fail and we just stop working and everything, no? Everything is useless. No. Everything will just be vanity. Everything will just be meaningless. When we die, nothing. We cannot, we cannot have, we cannot bring even one, one real or even one peso or even one, one dollar into our own pockets. Even if our loved ones will put stash of, of money into our pockets when in our coffin. But when we go into the grave, we will, we will just be like dust because and, and the, the, the money and everything and every rich and, and all the riches will just be part of the grave. But our lives, our body will just turn into dust. And these riches will not be ours. It is meaningless, church. It is meaningless. Therefore, fear the Lord. Obey Him. For it is not enough just to know about God, to write or to read about Him, no? but we must know Him and follow Him. Yeah. This is the goal. I think this is the greatest achievement every person must do. And when we follow God, it will be His greatest achievement and it will be a fulfillment of his own life. It will be a legacy for a person that when he goes out of this earth, no, but knowing that he has God in him, he has fulfilled the commandments of God, he has lived a life worthy in the eyes of God, then that is his own legacy. Amen? Number two, this the book of Ecclesiastes no, teaches us to cultivate Dynamic devotion. If you come to, to read the book of Ecclesiastes, it is at the very end where Solomon realized you know, that the, the journey in finding meaning in life you know, does not really seek, does not really answer as he seek, seeks lies simply to the devotion of God. That until the very end of his journey to find meaning in his life, does he realize the answer he seeks lies simply in devotion to God and obedience in his ways. 
a life of meaning, purpose, great joy, and fulfillment can be ours if we will devote our lives to the Lord and follow Him all the days of our lives. But remember, church, devotion is just a product of our love to God. If though we don't love God, then our, our, uh, we cannot fully devote our lives to Him. No? Without love, it is still meaningless. Matthew 22, verse 37 says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Without love, we cannot fully devote ourselves. Just like with your wife or with your husband or with your loved ones, you fully devote yourselves into them. No? We fully devote your life into, their, in, into them. Because why? Because you love them very much. No? God, the book of Ecclesiastes is teaching us that we should love God first and foremost so that we can devote our life, we can fear God, we can have our all in all no, into Him. Well, and, and lastly, as a parting verse, I will just uh, give you this. My favorite, this is one of my favorite verse, Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that it presents your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be, trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Do not be conformed in this world. Indeed, this world is so tempting. Life is so tempting. You know? But if we fully devote our lives to God because we love God, then sometimes, uh, most of the time we may do things that is out of the conformity of this world. But know that once we do the things that is for God, then we may know what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Life will be, will be more uh, fulfilling. Life will be more peaceful. Life will be more joyful. Life is really a blessing. No? Wherein we can just say, thank you, Lord, and hallelujah. No? Because you are with us. Our God is our Emmanuel. He is with us. He will always be with us. He is faithful. He is just. He is merciful. And he loves you so much that he even gives us this kind of book. This kind of book where for us to know that indeed, his name will still be glorified at the very end. That life is, is, is just futile. Life is just pointless. Life is just, is just weak without him. And with our situation right now, experiencing these things, the pandemic, the wars, the rumors of wars, and everything, you know, the economy is slumping down. You know, there is no peace at all. But with, you, with us having our, our mindset and the perfect will of God mindset into our Lord Jesus Christ, then we can have still still have the peace in our lives, and we can just say, "Lord, you are good. You are always good, and you will always stay good." Hallelujah! I hope that you that you that you you have grasped uh, uh, what the message for us uh, today. I hope that you uh, that uh, you have learned something out of our of what we have discussed today, and I just hope that uh, that that we must uh, do things you know, that is rightfully godly, and just like just like the 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 word of God, the, uh, the, the Solomon says that we must fear God, we must uh, ha we must fear God, you no. Know? Right now, no? seek God right now. Not tomorrow, not later, but now. This is a message of urgency. This is a message of urgency. Therefore, we must do it in urgency as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Let us uh, close in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness in our lives. Indeed, Lord, you, uh, you have used, Lord, uh, Solomon, 
to bring, Lord God, a realization of life, O oh Lord. This realization, Lord God, that life indeed is fragile. Life indeed is weak. Life indeed is, uh, is pointless and meaningless without you. Thank you so much, Lord God, for, for giving us, Lord God, a life lesson. That indeed, without you, life will be nothing. Thank you so much, Lord God, for blessing us with uh, the words of wisdom. The words of wisdom, Lord God, that uh, makes us uh, know, Lord God, that indeed, Lord God, we are just too fragile, O oh Lord. That we are just too weak. And thank you for that, for that word of wisdom, O oh God, that uh, leads us, Lord, into realization that you are all that we need. We are, we, you are all that we need to devote to, O oh Lord. That indeed, the life, Lord God, that we have right now is indeed meaningless. The life that we, the, the riches that we acquire right now, the assets that we have, everything that we have, Lord God, we just, we just pass by, Lord God, like the wind, O oh Lord. And thank you for teaching us, O oh Lord, that there is eternity waiting for us when, when, we, when we go out of, this, out of this place, Lord God, earth. We just pray, Lord God, that you will teach us, O oh Lord, to number our days. Teach us, Lord God, to be wise, Lord God, to be wise, that as we count our days, Lord God, as we count our minutes, Lord God, in this life, we may, we may uh, thank, O oh Lord, hallelujah, to, to do things, Lord God, that is, uh, that is uh, approved, Lord God, in your sight. We may have, Lord God, the fear in you. The fear, Lord God, indeed, that because when, when life, Lord God, uh, will, will, will diminish, Lord, in uh, in us, oh Lord God, hallelujah. We know that there are just two things, Lord, that, uh, that, that uh, will be at hand, Lord God, to us. We hope and we just pray, Lord God, we just pray, oh God, hallelujah, that it will be your place, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to be wise enough, Lord God, to do, th to do the things, Lord God, that is right before your eyes. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. Let, uh, help us to resist the darts of the enemies. Help us to resist the temptations of this earth. Help us, Lord, to resist to or us to be comprom to compromise, Lord God, on things of this earth. And help us, Lord God, to be wise. To do the things, Lord God, that is for you alone. Thank you so much, Lord God, for everything. Bless, Lord God, each and every one. Who is uh, who is uh, partner of this of this uh, virtual service? O oh Lord, bless them mightily. Whatever are they are their takings? O oh Lord, thank you so much, Lord God, that you will always be with them. You will always be with them, Lord God, to sustain them. You will always be there, Lord God, to provide, Lord God, every needs to them that they need, and uh, and uh, be assured, Lord God, that you are the God who is faithful. You will always be with them. You will always stay with them, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord God, for everything. All honor and adoration belongs to you alone. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Okay na po, Pastor C.P. Pwede na magsalita. Sino po sa communion? Bro CP, CP, CK, bro CK, ako po. Bro CK. Okay po, okay po. Praise God. Good day po sa lahat. I know, I believe that everyone is good. Amen. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. 
So, the message of the Lord today we heard by our dear pastor. It is about in the book of Ecclesiastes, which is, um, everything is vanity without God. Amen. But we are so blessed because we have a, we have a living God which is everything that we were uh, doing is to glorify his name. So it's, um, it's all for the glory of God. And then he, he asked questions. There were two questions that were being asked by our dear pastor, by his message, through his message, that how we committed ourselves to God. So in this time of pandemic church, how are we... Uh, how are we being committed to our God? So, uh, committed ba lang uh, ba tayo kung, kung regular your service natin or we're seeing each other? Or even in this situation, instead in the situation uh, makes us closer to God, our commitment to God, reading through, reading our Bibles, Bible study through online, or any means of being connected to Him. Amen. Amen. And then the second one, how how God measures our standard according to His standards. I mean, is our standard that we're living now? Yeah, because it's very um, uh, obvious in our situation that it's not the same anymore. I mean, not the same that we had to used to. So are, are, are we living in the same standard of God even in this kind of situation in our lives? So... Praise God in all um, about the message of God is without God, everything is meaningless. So let's continue to, to, to seek God every now and then because God is faithful in every, every second, every minute, every day in our lives. He is faithful and with God, everything is meaningful with God. So I will not elaborate any uh, because the message of God is very clear. So let's proceed our communion. So before church, let's ask uh, give, uh, forgiveness to our God. Let's cleanse our hearts. Ask to the Lord, purify our hearts. So God, our thoughts, our everything in us. Let's ask forgiveness to God. Hallelujah. I'll give you. And before that, you have already the bis, uh, biscuits or crackers, anything in you, and uh, a cup or the juice. It's ready. Hallelujah. It's ready po. Paalagan na lang po ng, ano, ng, ha, ng thumbs up natin. Okay, okay, okay. So praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's ask forgiveness to God. Hallelujah. Yes, O oh Lord, O oh God, forgive us, bless our hearts, O oh God, purify, Lord. Jesus, we want to remember that you died for us, for your people. We want to remember, Lord, O oh God, that we are healed because of your precious blood, O oh God. As you said, O oh Lord God, we are healed by your precious name, O oh Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, in anything, O oh Lord God, that uh, not pleasing to your eyes, Lord, what we did, O oh Lord God, or what it's in our hearts, O oh Lord, in our mind, cleanse our hearts, O oh God. Because Jesus, Lord, we want to remember that you died on the cross, O oh Lord God, for your people, because Lord, that is how great is your love to us, mm -hmm. O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, church, uh, hold the bread. Here in in First Corinthians, chapter eleven, for I received from the Lord. Raise your, uh, raise the bread, please. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, the Lord that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he said giving thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So please take the bread.
raise the cup. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this at offices to drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till, the, till he comes. Let's drink the cup. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give thanks to the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for your righteousness, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That we have this opportunity and we have this privilege to celebrate your goodness, oh God. We have this opportunity, Lord God, to remember how great, how awesome, how faithful, how good you are in our lives, Jesus. Lord, all the glory belongs to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, oh God. For you alone, ha the highest adoration and worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are now coming to the part in the service where we remind each and every one of us about uh, offerings, uh, giving. Um, I would like to point to the book of Acts in chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. I'll read it for you. It says, Now all who believe together, uh, now all who believe were together and had all things in common. And in verse 45, we see it said and sold their possessions and goods and divided them along all, among all as anyone had need we understand that this time my dear brothers and sisters that uh, this is not uh, we are in a time of uh, uncertainty in many areas uh, as we have heard from our preacher he was telling us of the vanity of things but there is still those important things that remain we fear God, obey His commandments. And one of His commandments we see is to give to those who are in need, to remember the poor, to remember those who are uh, sick, to remember those who are um, in need. And in particular, I would like to lift up to you the family, uh, the Nakor family. Uh, Brother CK, if you could please flash the face of our dear um, pastor. My dear brother, brothers and sisters, this is uh, Arturo Avelino Jr. Nakor, also known as Pastor Jojo. He passed away this morning, as our dear Pastor Fitz uh, mentioned. Um, he faithfully served the Lord in the GSRK Church, and he was a dear friend, a dear brother. Uh, we know where he is. His family is here. Uh, his, he was with his Apo when he died. Um, it happened at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I would like to ask for, personally, each one of us here, if you have, if God is leading you to assist their family, please approach your elders, please approach your pastors, or send a message if you'd like to, send, you'd like to give some help. And we will make sure that it arrives to them. Uh, they uh, heard his daughter is also pregnant at the moment uh, and uh, is in the hospital also. Uh, we lift up also our prayers for them. And we also understand that we also have brothers and sisters who are uh, doing quarantine. We have some brothers who are now uh, in a quarantine area and they also are in need. We would also encourage you, just like what happened in the book of Acts in the verses that we read how because everyone gave out of the abundance of joy of their salvation none of them lacked so we will follow in the footsteps of all of um all of our uh, brothers and sisters who've gone before so 
um, if you have any offering that you would like uh, to give uh, again you can simply message those uh, your contacts and any amount will do it is not out of compulsion but as the bible says give it out of a cheerful heart out of a gracious and and uh, gratitude filled heart so um, if you have something in your heart uh, let's pray for that okay we'll pray together father in heaven we thank you for uh, the opportunity to bear fruit and that fruit is to give for others who are in need may we remember that we are all one body and if one body one part of the body aches the whole body feels the pain and we lift up to you the family of pastor jojo uh, we pray that they would be comforted at this time that they know where pastor jojo is and we know all of us know lord we will see him once again in the time that you have appointed for each and every one of us oh god and may you bless the offerings that will be given lord may you bless the love gifts and any uh, assistance that will be given for the church or for uh, the family and uh, may we also remember oh lord that you are our supplier you are our provider and we know all this is coming from you for your glory thank you so much may you bless the hearts of each one who's watching here in jesus name we pray amen god bless you all Okay na po, Pastor CP. Your turn. Blessed afternoon. Blessed uh, morning, brothers and sisters. Praise God for the message that uh, was given by God today to us. And uh, praise God for uh, the lives of the brothers and sisters who came today. Uh, although we are miles apart, we remember the message that God has uh, given us in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. So uh, praise God that uh, he has given us a very uh, personal message and we learn that uh, it is from uh, the experience of uh, King Solomon. And uh, as Pastor Fitz has told us, he, he has written Ecclesiastes during the time when he was in a backslidden, he was a backslider. I noted as well that uh, Pastor Fitz told us that uh, now, while we are young, as also said uh, by uh, by Kohelet or uh, the teacher or the preacher, who is uh, Solomon. He said that uh, he has he has um, he has quoted in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse one. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, and that we are all still young, relatively. No, uh, relatively because uh, the average life, I mean the the maximum, I would say life of a person here on earth is around 120 but uh, brothers and sisters let us not also be deceived in 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 uh, thinking that we are still there on a third of our life because now for example in this time of uh, pandemic some of us may probably have to visit cemeteries when we will have to bring some relative to their earthly rest. And there in cemeteries, we will find that there are that the great evidences that some are taken at birth some die 
when they were a child, some die in their teens, some die in their 20s, some die in their 30s, some die in their 40s, and so on. So brothers and sisters, you may probably be living the last day of your life. But praise God, still He gave us grace. Even today, we have this time. God has given us the grace even to hear His message. And a very personal message at that. Solomon lived a life that probably we all wish for. But at the end of his life, he said it was all vanity. That is, the pursuit of riches is vanity. The pursuit for fame is vanity. Spending time in meaningless things is vanity. The pursuit of and the desire to have more things is vanity or meaningless. At the end of his life, it became clear what is really the most important in life, which is to fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to face your creator today? Our pastor also gave us on his last part of his uh, sermon, we must grow in godliness. Brothers and sisters, the life of a Christian must be growing in godliness. Are we stepping forward and then stepping back twice. What I'm trying to say is that are we also on a backslidden state of our Christianity? Only God knows, brothers and sisters. But one thing is for sure. God gave us a message today for us to think about. And we have been instructed by the word. God is giving us a chance to, think, to change, brothers and sisters. It's the word of God that cleanses us. If we see our doctors, and now actually the medical field is being, being always talked about, and we know that the only way for us to cure a disease or the best way to cure a disease is to first have a correct diagnosis of the disease. And brothers and sisters, once we know and once we first acknowledge our state, that is already the first part of curing the disease acknowledging that there is in fact a disease that must be cured and if we are on that stage let us acknowledge before god let us confess to him lord i'm sorry for being a backslider in in uh, first chronicles chapter in the first in in the in the account of of Hezekiah in first, in second chronicles chapter 29 we re, we recall that when Hezekiah was appointed to be a king and he wanted to renew worship in the temple he first what he first did was to clean up the temple with the idols, 
with a lot of things, with cobwebs that is in the temple. And our preacher today reminded us as well that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 1 to 12, let us present our bodies to God as well. 12, 1 to 2. He has also said, and also, uh, brothers and sisters, we are reminded in, in, the, in uh, Corinthians that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He said there that, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And uh, brothers and sisters, let us recommit, re, re, recommit this temple to God. Let us clean this temple and recommit it to our God. Today is a call to us to think about our lives and how we are in the sight of God. That we should always make it a point to fear God and keep his commandments. And that we should remember our creator in the days of our youth. During this time, we have to make sure that God is the center of our lives, brothers and sisters. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't know, we don't really know what are the things in the temple of God, which is your body, our body, our bodies, what is in there that should be cleaned up. May God, may we lift it up to God, brothers and sisters, whatever it is that hinders our growth as a Christian. In our phones, for example, we're in now, a lot of us maybe make it indispensable. We don't sometimes leave home without those phones. But even those phones, brothers and sisters, let us come. Meet them to God. Whatever apps in there, let us review them as well, whether they are also uh, where we, whether they are also hindering our growth. Delete those apps that are taking a lot of our time. You know? And I would would challenge you, brothers and sisters. If your love to God is deeper than those apps that are keeping you busy during this time of pandemic, a lot of us have more time, but is it really that we have more time for the Lord or more time for Facebook, more time for Messenger, more time for TikTok or those things that are new uh, today? So brothers and sisters, I would also encourage everyone to recommit, brothers and sisters, our lives to God. Recommit all of those things around us to God. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the message that you have given us today. Thank you, Lord, that um, you have Used, O oh Lord, even the life of a person who has lived 4,000 or uh, 3,000 years ago, Lord God, that we may learn from him, O oh Lord God. Lord, a person that has, Lord God, had all the riches, had all the fame, O oh Lord God, in, in life. And he knew, Lord God, King Solomon knew that all of them, all of those things came from you, O Lord God. And yet, O Lord God, in the times that he had all of those things, he had all the fame, all the riches, O Lord God, all the power. And yet, O Lord God, he had little taste, Lord God, 
of the things that are of of you O lord but uh, in, at the end of his life he had realized O lord god that those things didn't matter at all and what mattered most lord god is a person's relationship to his creator lord we pray lord god that we as brethren, O oh Lord God, in Christ, Lord God, we will, Lord, Lord God, continue, Lord God. You, whatever, Lord God, the work you have started in us, Lord God, you will finish it, O oh Lord God. And we will continue to abide in you, O oh Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, we lift up, O oh Lord God, we confess to you, O oh Lord God, whatever shortcomings that we have, O oh Lord. Lord, we confess, O oh Lord God, that we have not spent, the Lord God, our time wisely. And we ask for forgiveness, O Lord. We pray for your grace, O Lord God, that we will be able, O Lord God, to continue, Lord God, in our faith, O Lord God. Strengthen our faith, O Lord God. Lord, use even our brothers and sisters, our pastors, O Lord God, that we will, O oh Lord God, be able to strengthen our faith, O oh Lord God. That we will be able to be corrected, O oh Lord God, of uh, whatever, O oh Lord, things that we are doing, O oh Lord God, that is not, Lord God, that, it, that, uh, that you do not like, O oh Lord God. Lord, may, you, uh, may we will always, Lord God, have the, the love, Lord God, to, to read your word, O oh Lord God to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters, even though we are far from each other, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you have provided this avenue for us, Lord God, to be able, O oh Lord God, to be in fellowship with our brothers and sisters, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for the life of our pastor, O oh Lord God, who has spent his time, O oh Lord, to research, to prepare, O oh Lord God, what you have wanted him to share to each and every one of us, O oh Lord God. Lord, continue to bless him, continue to anoint him, O oh Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to, to bless, Lord God, his work. Continue, Lord God, to, um, to bless his family, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that you have made them a blessing to the church, Lord God, and to many other people, O oh Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, to our brothers and sisters, Lord God, who are currently, Lord God, in uh, isolation places. Lord, we pray, Lord God, and we thank you for your assurance, O Lord, that as you have said, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord God, that in their heart, Lord God, you are whispering always that you are with them. Continue, Lord God, to comfort them, Lord God, at this time. Lord, for our brothers and sisters and to all people, Lord God, who are locked down in their houses, Lord God, we pray for provision for them as well, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that you will provide for them, for, for their need, Lord God. You are, Lord God, our Jehovah Jireh, O oh Lord God. And to all those, Lord God, who has been infected with this this is, O oh Lord God. Lord, you are our Jehovah Rapha, Lord God. You are our great doctor, Lord God, our great healer. Lord, the name of this disease, Lord God, is nothing compared to the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord God, whom we can always call to, Lord God, for healing, O oh Lord. We know, Lord God, that you made miracles, Lord God, when you walked in this earth. And you can always make miracles, Lord God, anytime. You have created everything from nothing, O Lord God. And we trust, Lord God, in your promises. Hallelujah. And Lord, we also pray, Lord God, you will, O Lord God, use people, Lord God, to find a cure for this disease, Lord God. And we pray that all will come back to normal very, very soon, O Lord. Lord, we pray for our leaders that you will provide, Lord, you will give them wisdom, you will give them knowledge, Lord God, to handle this, this uh, problem, O oh Lord God. 
We pray also, Lord God, for the citizens of each country, Lord God. Lord, to practice discipline, Lord God. We pray that uh, you will provide for their needs so that they don't need to go out, oh Lord God, so that we can, Lord God, corner this disease, oh Lord God. Just like the other plagues in history, oh Lord, that they are, Lord God, now part of history, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, brothers and sisters, let us, in faith, Lift up to God our concerns. Hallelujah. Our God is our great provider. He's our great healer. He is awesome. Hallelujah. He is our great refuge, brothers and sisters in our time of need. Hallelujah. And lift up those concerns to God. And we know in faith that God will meet all of our needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for continuing, O Lord God, to strengthen us in our daily walk. We lift up to you as well, O Lord, our work, O oh Lord God, and continue to make us, O oh Lord God, channels of blessings to our families, Lord God, and our workmates as well, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. All this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless everyone, brothers and sisters. God bless, God bless. God bless. Bye bye. 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 Ang ganda ng box natin, ha? <laughs> Kala ko nga si Sister Willie. <laughs> Mukhang ano yung model sa ano sa US. <laughs> Bye po. Thank you po. Bye. God, God bless. Thank you always. God bless. Bless po. God. Tera, Kel. Bro, Tom. Bro, Tommy. Tommy. Bro, Tommy. Kumusta ka? Hey. <laughs>